from the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Empe Presents. Oh my, what headlines we have for you today, absolutely outstanding, and certainly Jack is going to have to enlighten us on most of them. A frosty showdown between the United States and Russia, I thought that we were doing better than that. I thought that we were actually pretty close in our ties and goals. And then Iran and Syria issue first explicit warning to Israel if the United States enters in. Whoa. And destruction of Israel guaranteed, the Ayatollah says. Well, I, I know that Jack's going to disagree with that, and he's going to tell us so very, very much more. But I want to ask him a question right up front before we get started on any of the headlines, the global headlines. Jack, you've been preaching the coming war with Russia. Now, that goes along sort of with that first headline the coming war with Russia, according to the Bible, for many, many, many years. In fact, a long time ago, the first time that I heard him preach, it was on the coming war with Russia. I was amazed. What actually caused you to become interested in that topic? Well, I was at this Bible conference as a speaker for youth with Dr. L. Sal Harrison, who had a book on the Great Northern Confederacy. And I became very enamored and excited about the message. So I started digging into many books. And I got a hold of material by Dr. DeHaan, Dr. Gabeline, Dr. Schofield, Dr. Marvin Lau, Dr. Charles Pont, Dr. Louis Talbot, Dr. Edmund, uh, Dr. Dwight Pentecost, Dr. John Walverd, and many others. But I want you to put something on the screen that really mean something, believe me, because this was written 300 years ago by one of the great Anglican bishops of England. Bishop Louth of London, England, proclaimed the message of Ezekiel chapters 38 and 39 300 years ago. Imagine, in 1713, stating, Ezekiel's prophecy without question relates to the latter ages of the world when Israel shall return to their own land. Rosh signifies those inhabitants of Cynthia from whence the Russians derive their name. This formidable invasion of the land of Israel, God will defeat the Persians, Iran and Iraq, and Afghanistan from the east, the Ethiopians from the south, and the Moors, Libyans from the west shall join with Rosh in the invasion. Rexella, this was the first time I had heard of the Muslim nations entering it. Didn't hear it in the 20th century, but it was preached back then, 300 years ago. We're going to get into this oh, now. Oh, yes, Jack. Oh. Well, you know, it wasn't too long ago we had very high expectations of world peace, and the Obama administration certainly has uh, some critical times ahead of them right now. And here you see on Time Magazine, the unhappy warrior Barack Obama ran for president to get the U.S. out of wars, not into them. And here, oh, this really shocked me from the week, a frosty showdown between the United States and Russia. And here you see it, diplomatic riff with Putin deepens as Obama cancels meeting. Whoa. And that was uh, something that uh, very unexpected. You see how unhappy they look going on. U.S.-Russia ties risk going off the rails, off the rails. And Putin resets relations to Cold War era. And as I said, it wasn't very long ago, friends, that we thought we were really going to be facing some time of peace but not now. And I'm going to ask Jack a very, very serious question. Could all the things happening in the Middle East, especially with Russia and the United States, lead to World War III? Oh, Rex Seller, there's no doubt about it. World War III is right on the horizon. And Daniel 9.26 says, wars and desolations are determined until the end. 
And Jesus said in Matthew 24, verses 6 and 7, and Mark chapter 13, verses 7 and 8, ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And it all leads to a war called Armageddon, Revelation 16, verse 16. And I can't believe this. I've preached this for over 60 years. I've preached it in hundreds of meetings. Thousands have come to Christ through this message. In Atlanta alone, we had to fill an auditorium three times in succession as the lines were waiting to hear it. And we have come to that hour. And everything I preached all these years, I've lived to see where for the first time in world history, facing it, because every single nation is now waiting in place. And you know, it wasn't long ago that our president had this non-proliferation treaty with Russia. And he made it with Medvedev. And then Putin has come back, and now our president and Putin aren't making it. There's a lot of nastiness going on. But here's what's about to come. What is Armageddon? Who, what, where, when, and why? Yeah, big questions, Jack. Yeah. Big questions. Yeah, you talk about World War III. You want to say who for sure. Let's go to who and how they are coming together and preparing right now. Take a look. Russia begins construction of new anti-missile radar. There you are again, Russia, Putin to visit to run for nuclear talks. Oh, dear. And then, going on again, China and Russia conduct joint naval drill. There they are together. And China's secret menace. You know, I asked Jack, what in the world does that mean? Cyber warfare. That is very, 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 very frightening. Rouhani calls for broadening of ties with China. Of course, that is the new president in Iran. I want to back up here to that first one concerning Russia. Will Russia be the one who will sort of be the leader of gathering together the ones that will form World War III? Yeah. There's a great misunderstanding because most people think that Armageddon is just Russia. There are three different invasions. The first one is Russia, the second one is China, and the third is when all nations come against Jerusalem to battle, Zechariah 14, 2. So we're going to get into these three different things. It's a campaign, yes. not just a battle. All right, campaign. Uh, let's prove that uh, Russia's the one, all right? Now, Jack has quoted Ezekiel 38 to us so very, very often, but I'm going to just grab quickly a few names out of Ezekiel 38. First of all, Gog, G-O-G, pointing to Russia, right? Yes, that's the leader of the Russian Empire at the time of the Battle of Armageddon. The Caucasus Mountains running throughout Russia mean Fort of Gog, Gog's last stand. All right, again, Ezekiel 38, May Gog. Historians know that the Scythians settled Russia, but the Greeks called these Scythians Magog or Magogites. And then going on, Meshach. Is that it in Ezekiel 38? Yeah, that the names throughout history, Meshek, Mosak, Muscati, Muscovy, and Moscow today. And Tubal, that's also there. Tubal is southwest of Siberia. And there it's called Tobolsk because the Russian suffix SK is added to the word. But that's the very place where Gary Powers, the U-2 pilot, was shot down many years ago. No doubt about it. And then also Rosh, R-O-S-H. Okay, in your Bible it says chief prince. But that tells a description of a person. This is a noun, a proper noun. And it's in the Hebrew Bible, Rosh, R-O-S-H. And that, of course, is like in Belgium, we say Hrisland. And here in America, Russia. And even today, the people of Israel still say Rosh. For Russia, no doubt about it. And then here, this is so troubling, how China and Russia are getting together, joint naval uh, drills and so forth, and then how they have this cyber warfare. Jack, China is very important in this amalgamation of countries too, right? Well, when Russia comes down to the Middle East, they have an Arab federation with them, composed of Egypt, Daniel 11:40. Syria, Isaiah 17, 1. Ezekiel 38, verses 5 to 7, as Bishop Louth said years ago, that's Iran and Iraq, the Persian Gulf, and they changed their names in 1935 to Iran. And 
Iraq was very close to that time. And as we go on, we find that Cush and Put is there in the Hebrew Bible, and that's Yemen and all these nations in that area. And that moves over to Algeria, Morocco, Casablanca, uh, Tunisia. And then we get into Psalm 83, verses 5 to 7. And we have Amman, which is Jordan. We have Gibal, which is Lebanon. We have the Hagarines, 12 tribes. Many, many multiplied Muslim nations going along with Russia, and they're defeated. In Ezekiel 39, verses 1 and 2, Behold, I'm against the Ogog, the Russian prince of Moscow and Tabal. I'll turn you back and leave but a sixth part of thee. All of their armies, along with the Muslims, fall. And verse 7 tells us that seven months shall the house of Israel be bearing of them, and they shall sever out men of continual employment, verse 13. They're working around the clock 24 hours a day just to bury the dead that have fallen there. Yea, seven months of doing it. Now, then China makes that in second invasion. And that's Revelation 16, 12, when the hordes from the Orient come down, the kings of the east, the kings of the sun rising, British Revised Version says, moves in and the fall, the leftover armies of Russia are with them. And that's in Daniel 11:44, when tidings, uh, trouble comes to the Antichrist, the world dictator is in charge. And they come from the east and the north. East, of course, is China. North is Russia with all of her hordes. That's the second invasion. It's the bloodiest battle in history. Nothing will ever compare to it again. That's why Daniel 12, 1 says there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation to that time. And at that time, thy people, the Jews, will be delivered. God's going to come to their aid. I'll send fire upon Gog of Magog and her hordes. Ezekiel 39, verse 6. Rexella, the war is described in Revelation chapter 9, verses 14 and 18. Loose the four angels. These are wicked spirits bound in the great river Euphrates. That's where our troops are now to slay a third part of mankind. The number of the army was 200,000, 200 million. Russia, the Orient can produce that number right now. And Iran says, we can give you 100 million as they go together, because Iran will be there as well. And what happens? By these three was the third part of men killed by the fire, smoke, and brimstone. Atomic warfare. Psalm 97, 3, Isaiah 66, 15, Ezekiel 20, 47, Joel 2, verses 3 and 31, Zephaniah 1, 18, Malachi 4, 1, Revelation 8, 7. Fire, brimstone the greatest war in history. Mm, Jack, now you mentioned Iran yeah. uh, just a moment ago. Uh, Rouhani already, that's the new president of uh, Iran, was calling for broadening of ties with China. So they are really starting to enter in already, yeah. aren't they? Yeah, right now our problem, and it's not going to start over Syria, but Russia and China is there, and they've got their ships, and they said, don't you dare, Barack Obama, touch Syria or else. And if it happens, you're going to be reading how they're going to make Israel pay for it. But they're not going to win. Mm. You know, the main focus right now is on Syria, but we're going to see where it's all going, friends, in just a moment. And, you know, I'm sure some of you are sitting at home and saying, oh, whoa, this is nothing but bad news. I'm going to guarantee that before we finish with this program, you're going to say, I'm glad that I could hear Jack Van Impey today because he's going to give you an opportunity to have peace in a troubled, troubled time. Do you have peace? You can have in just a moment. But we have a brand new offer out now, Christ's return, millions deceived. All right, take a look, please, at the new promo. The shocking, astonishing, and eye-opening report on Christ's return, Millions Deceived, is now available after months of research. It covers the most erroneous information ever promoted in Christianity's history. It deals with mockers and scoffers who deny the rapture and the coming millennial reign of Christ upon earth. One group, preterist apostates, teach that every sign pointing to Christ's return was fulfilled by 70 AD. How ridiculous! Another scandalous anti-Jewish blasphemy is that God is through with the Jews forever. 
Four major Protestant denominations teach that lie to justify their falsehood they promote replacement theology, manipulating God's holy word 3,400 times, stating that every text mentioning Israel should be translated as the church and Jerusalem as heaven. It's frustrating, confusing, and unscripturally desecrating of God's holy book. Within Catholicism, five scholarly theologians predict the final biblical sign to occur soon as Latter-day Catholic leaders defect and devastate the faith of millions. Who, what, where, when, and why is behind this tragedy? Order the video Christ's Return, Millions Deceived, and you will know. Oh, friends, there's the 800 number, and there is the address. If ever, ever I wanted you to have any of our offers, this is the one, because you won't be confused, I promise, about any of this. This is a two-DVD set. So be sure and order it. All your questions will be answered. Everything on that promo answered. Everything we're talking about on this program answered. And as you read the newspapers, you'll really understand it. Christ returned. Millions deceived. Are you kidding? You don't want to be deceived. You won't be, I promise, if you order this right away. We'll get it in the mail as soon as we hear from you. As I mentioned a moment ago, the main focus right now is on Syria, of course, but the climax of where all of this is going to lead in the future will be Israel and the Palestinians. Take a look, Israel, Palestine, peace talks resume in Jerusalem and make peace or else. Kerry's arm twisting gets Israelis and Palestinians back to the table. He says, you've got to do this. And failure is not an option. That's Kerry talking once again. Blood on their hands. Oh, emotions run high. As the government agrees to release 104 Palestinian prisoners in exchange for new peace talks. Now, the Israelis said we will release 104 of the prisoners if we can in exchange for starting the peace talks again. Here you see it again. A high price to pay releasing 104 Palestinian terrorists because they want to go back to the peace table here, the new convert. And of course, that is Prime Minister Netanyahu. He's joining the long list of Israeli hawks who become doves. It is not because of Western pressure, but because of Middle East turmoil. He said, we've got to get back to the peace table. Snapshot of an uneasy community. A rising tide of anti-Semitism has Turkish Jews on edge. That's Tagarma. Tagarma. Ezekiel 38.6. Yes, there it, it is. Yes, it is. 2,500 years I spent in the Bible. There it is. All right, Jack, I want to ask this question. They're talking about the peace talks. Will they really have peace? Can they really make a, a, pre, a peace that will last? First of all, you've heard about the Antichrist and the false prophet. And that's, of course, Revelation 13, 1, where the world dictator arises and has power over all kindred tongues, people, and nations, verse 7, and all the world worships him, verse 8, because this false religious leader has made an image to him. And they said, this is the one for whom we looked. Now the leader of the new world order comes to power, rises to the heights, because he contracts the peace program for the world. He comes in peaceably, Daniel 11:21. enters in peaceably, verse 24. But it's the contract of death and hell, Isaiah 28, 15. Why? Because by peace, he deceives many, Daniel 8, 25. Well, how can that be? Because they think it's settled. Peace, peace, it's wonderful. Peace, peace. Jeremiah 6, 14 and chapter 8, verse 11. And so they're all saying it's something. Seven years has been laid down as the contract for peace, Daniel 9, 27. But after 42 months, when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction shall come. And that's when Russia makes the move. I repeat what I said earlier. 
It's a campaign, not just a battle. Move number one is Russia and the Arab hordes. Move number two is China, the leftover armies of Russia and the Arab hordes. And number three is all nations coming against Jerusalem. They've all blamed everything on these precious people, the Jews. And that's Zechariah 14.2. But it's at that time the Messiah comes. He sets his foot upon the Mount of Olives and he comes to bring peace and put an end to those who are warring and killing one another in Revelation 11.18. We'll see more about that in a moment. Oh boy, Jack, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. It's yeah. going to happen yeah. Yeah. one of these yeah. days. Yeah. I'll tell you, well, the Palestinian Authority gave a very extreme view of their developments with Israel. Look at that. Palestine will be, Jude and reign, free of Jews. Oh, dear. I never thought I'd see this coming out of Canada. A quad day, speaker calls for Israelis to be killed. This happened in Canada. Now, this is what the speaker of that day had to say. Jack, would you like to read it, please? Elias Hazanah called for the forced ethnic cleansing of Israeli Jews as a solution to the Arab-Israeli conflict. We say, get out or you're dead. We give them two minutes, and then we start shooting, and that's the only way these Jews will understand. Oh, my, how sad and going on here with Syria, Iran issue. First, explicit warning to Israel if U.S. attacks. And Hamas, Iran, putting aside their differences to fight Israel. And the army source, U.S. full-scale war on Syria justifies attack on Israel. Can you believe that one? And Khomeini, Israel-Palestinian Authority peace talks are futile. And destruction of Israel guaranteed, Ayatollah says. And then the Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says chemical attack proves Iran must not have nukes. How very, very true that is. Well, you can see Friends, the country's joining against Israel. My question to Jack is, who's going to help Israel? They seem to be kind of alone right now. Who's going to help them, Jack? Ezekiel 38, 13. Sheba, Dedan, and the merchants of Tarshish. Get your Webster's Dictionary out. Sheba is Saudi Arabia. Dedan is the United Arab Emirates. They're not going to go along with the usual crowd of Muslim terrorists. Now, Tarshish is a maritime nation. And remember the slogans of history? England, the mistress of the seas. Britannia rules the waves. America is the eagle. The great lion sits there in London, England. Why? Because she is the lion and all her young lions, her cubs, the English-speaking people of the world, unite with Israel. And then, of course, we have the European Union, which already has over 27 nations. So there is the lineup. And they defend Israel. And at that hour, Israel is going to be the most hated nation in the world. It's already almost there. Jeremiah 30, verse 7 says, Alas, for that day is great, that great war. There's none like it. It's the time of Jacob's trouble. And Jacob changed his name to Israel in 2 Kings 17, 34. You shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake, Jesus said in Matthew 24, 9. And the battleground at that time is not Syria. It is Jerusalem. It is Israel. Eighteen times in Ezekiel chapters 30 and 39, it mentions it. Listen to this. Do you believe God's word? Ezekiel chapter 38, verses 8, 14, 16, 17, 18, 19. Chapter 39, verses 2, 4, twice and 7, 9, 11, 12, 17, 22, 23, 25, 29. No doubt about it. It's Israel. And I got news for you, Russia, and all you hordes from the Orient, and all you Islamic terrorists. You're not going to win old Khomeini there in Iran because God says in Isaiah 56, 5, I'll give Israel an everlasting name. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. The Bible has the answer for everything. It answers our questions about current events, but more than that, it will answer the questions that you have about your personal needs. The Lord wants to be your Savior. Will you open your heart to the Lord Jesus? He'll come in and he'll free you from anything 
that is in your life, maybe drugs or alcohol or whatever, he'll free you if only you'll accept him as your savior. He died on the cross to give you eternal life with him. Will you pray this prayer as Jack prays the wonderful prayer of salvation? Open your heart, will you, Jack? You have heard how God's word is fulfilled after 60 years, and God promises salvation to you. And the blood of Jesus, God's son, cleanses from all sin. I don't care what you've done it. If you'll just look now at my face and pray this with me from your heart, he'll wash away your sin and save you. Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. You died to save me from my sin. You said, shed your precious blood to wash away every taint, every stain. And now I believe in it. I believe in you. Jesus, come into my heart. Save me in your holy name. I pray this. Amen. Amen. Did you pray that prayer? There's my address. Please write and let me know. I'll send you this little book called First Steps in a New Direction. The Lord will lead you every day. And now I just want to say this wonderful new offer, Christ Return, Millions Deceived. Here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive it. Chuck? Thank you, Rexella, my friend, to order Christ's return, millions deceived. Have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JBI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $34.95 to Jack Vanapy Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $34.95 to Jack Vanapee Ministries of Canada, Box 1717 Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Now back to Rexella. Thank you so much, Chuck. I just want to say, hey, you know, Chuck, this probably is the first time that we put together a two DVD set for one of our offers. It's so complete. Every single question that you might have about the future is in here. In fact, some people have written and said, is the world going to end? We answer that question. When will the Antichrist come to power? We answer that question. So many things about even Syria. Answer it in here. Jack didn't overlook one thing. So please make the call. There's the 800 number and there's the address. So write to me. We'll get this two DVD set in the mail as soon as we hear from you. You'll know everything. You won't be deceived anymore. I just want to say, friends, that the Bible does have the answer for all of us. We need to be reading it every day. But so often, too many people put their Bible on the shelf instead of in their heart. We need to be reading it every day. Look forward to being your home again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we so very much. Bye-bye.